feeling like I have a good day And all my homies wanna ride today And all of these mamas look fly today And all we wanna do is get by today Hey Let's get it started Ha! Let's get it started Ha! Let's get it started Ha! Let's get it started Let's get this thing started It's my kind of party Well, well, well Greetings Earthlings salutations to you and yours welcome to a thursday friday junior we call her around here the day is april 25th 2024 logan here a how, how the heck are you what do you have for me today anything at all no oh. did i tell you that i cracked a bunch of grout in my kitchen that you did. Oh, and, I did uh, tell you that. Okay. That your house may or may not come tumbling down. <laughs> That's not true, right? No. You were just exaggerating? No, I was nervous about the tile. Um, I put up, for you listening, I put up a floating shelf in our kitchen. And um, in order for me to get it really secured, I had to hit the living crap out of it to get it into the steel rods that were in the studs in the wall. Mm -hmm. And in the process of doing so, which I did, it looks beautiful. I'm really proud of it, actually. But in the process of doing so, I was hitting it into the wall so hard that the grout around my window trim all just came crumbling down, which honestly was kind of a blessing because it has to be caulking anyway, not grout. So really, it worked out miraculously. Oh, well, I'm glad. <laughs> Are you a guy that when you're using a stud finder, you put it over your own face and you say, oh, I it's found working. It right here. Yeah, it's working. Come on. You have to be a man, right, to do that. Like, that's like a, a man card thing. Yeah. Yeah. But Pretty also, I don't even have a stud finder. Ah! <laughs> I just look at myself in the mirror, baby. Oh, give me, a, <laughs> give me a break. Yesterday, we were talking about sneezing etiquette, how you operate in the world. If you missed it, we're going to replay it for you right now. Enjoy. Number one for New Country, 97.5 WKQ. We're Kira and Logan in the morning. Happy hump day, bump day to those who are celebrating. So we have the tribe up in here. Logan, hit him with the question. At what point during some, you know how when you start sneezing, sometimes two, three, seven comes out. Oh, yeah. At what point do you stop saying bless you? So, sales guy Sean over here, yeah. I listen to him in this office every day. And Sean is a very specific way he goes about things. If you sneeze one time, he'll say, bless you. If you sneeze again, he'll say, not saying it again. And then he keeps his mouth shut and doesn't say a word. Awesome. So I'm speaking on Sean's behalf here. But um, Sean, do you do you agree with my take on this? No, I don't. I operate differently in this building. I think it's three. I, like you can't after after the second after the second. God bless you. You can't go a third time. But yeah, in this office, I hold you guys to higher standards. You know, much love. But it's one, and then you're done. Yes, Lydia. I feel like I wait till they're like fully done, and then I'll say bless you after all. After oh, like, okay. <laughs> so you're not saying bless you on the first or second sneeze if you think more are coming. Yeah, I mean, because I had a friend in, um, or she's still my, one of my really good friends. She always sneezes like seven times. Like it's just like how she operates. Yeah. So I just have learned to be like wait until the end and be like, okay, bless you. We're are done. Are you quite finished? <laughs> yeah, literally. What about you, Logan? I feel like you just say it every time. So I'm, I'm pretty. If I'm the one sneezing. I'll sneeze and then say, someone will say, bless you. And I say, thank you so much. Don't say it again. More are coming. Mm -hmm. And then I'll sneeze a bunch more times. In terms of if other people are sneezing, it depends my level of friendship. For a stranger, I will say it every single time, no matter what. I'm like, you're welcome. Bless you. You're welcome. Bless you. You're welcome. Bless you. And then, but if it's That's not, not annoying. if it's not a stranger, like if Kira, if it, if Kira sneezes, I'm, I'm with Sean one or two. And then I announce that I'm done saying it. So Kira sneezes, sneezes again. Bless you. Sneezes again the second time. Bless you, Kira. I'm not saying it again. Mm -hmm. And I'll let her know that, it, that she's blessed for the day. Right. If, if, if I was in Hannafin's, right? And there was somebody in front of me. They sneeze. God bless you. They sneeze again. Oh, God bless you. They sneeze again. I'm probably saying something along the lines of, all right? Like, I'm probably... <laughs> you like, all right? Yeah, all right? <laughs> like, you which is, like, the probably, worst. No, I'm just saying, like... Like I'd probably try to make a joke out of it. I'm not. You don't. You don't get yeah. past two. God bless you guys. You, you don't get no three. No way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Enough. You get two. God bless you's at the most critical most. There's then, no way you're going past I like two. it. The thing about Logan is oh. bless himself too. Like. <laughs> God bless me. Yeah. God bless me. That, because again, I tell people not to bless me, so I might as well bless myself. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> the amount of times Logan is blessing himself in in one morning show is pretty awesome. Well, I don't want you to have to do it, and I do it quietly to myself. That's, that's true. <laughs> but seriously, if I'm going on a sneezing rampage, the right. second I do one, 
Um, I say to people around, like, don't, please don't bless me. Because, yeah. like, you're going to be tired by the end of this. Yo, blessing you is a full-time job. <laughs> okay, so we want to hear from you. How many bless yous are you giving out? Does it matter your relationship to the sneezer? Definitely. Do you cut it off like sales guy Sean? Or are you like Logan? Does the limit not exist? You're giving bless yous like Skittles. You're giving them out for free. 603-749-0975. Random caller who wants to share their God bless you etiquette. We will be giving you a pair of tickets to see Mara Morris at the Hampton Beach Casino Ballroom. Baby. Baby. How many God bless yous are you giving when someone goes on, as Logan put it, a sneezing rampage? Rampage. 603-749-0975. How do you operate in this sneezy boogery world? 603-749-0975. Number one for New Country, 97.5 WOKQ. It's us, your best friends on this planet we call Earth, Kira and Logan in the morning. We are talking sneezing etiquette. Hi, Sandra. You're on with Kieran Logan in the morning. Hi. How you doing today? Hi. We're good, but really it's more about you. How are you doing? I'm super amazing right now. Awesome. So how many God bless yous are you giving when someone is on a full-on sneezing rampage? Three. Three. Three is kind of the limit. <laughs> what happens after three? What happens if somebody's going sneeze number four? I ask them if they need to go see a doctor. <laughs> is there a doctor in the house? I have a few people that will sneeze like four, five, six times. And I'm like, no, dude, what's the matter with you? Take your medicine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I start out blessing them probably once, twice. And then when it gets to three, I'm like, I'm going to let you finish. Mm. <laughs> I ain't hanging out yeah, to I, hear the end. I have a grandson that sneezes three times. If he doesn't sneeze three times, I wonder if he's okay. Isn't that funny well, that certain people, okay. they like sneeze in threes or they sneeze in fives. It's like very consistent. Yeah. It is. It's, it's weird. I love delving into <laughs> sneeze science with you, Sandra. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Love you. Bye. Have a great day, guys. Doesn't love me back. I'm not going to take that personally, even though I'm fragile yeah, today. Yeah, she will. She, You absolutely will take that personally. I'm going to hold on to that. So I got what's a question. Up? Yeah. I got a question for you. Do you sneeze random people in public? Do I sneeze random people Sorry, in public? Sorry. You knew what I meant. I deserved that. Do you bless random people? You're in the grocery store. Yeah. You hear a sneeze. I don't even see who sneezes. I yell out, bless you. I know that's your energy. I 100% know that's your energy. Are no. you? No, I'm not doing that. To no one? I'm not doing that unless I'm like, I can see them. Okay. Not, if they're like an aisle down. All right, fine. You see them. But they're bless the, you from the heavens. You see them, but they're at the end of the aisle. You're like, you're on one aisle no. end cap. Wow. No, you I'm just not. not looking out for our community. Oh huh? my God. I'll bless you if you're in my path of blessing. If it's convenient, you'll bless people. If you're within a certain foot proximity <laughs> to me. I'm, <laughs> that, that, I'm gonna ask every caller from now on if they're blessing people in public. Okay, perfect. 603-749-0975. We want to hear about your bless you etiquette. Random caller is going to win these tickets to see Marin Morris on Hampton Beach. 603-749-0975. How many bless you? are you giving like number one for new country 97.5 WOKQ we're here on Logan in the morning so our question how many God bless you's are you giving when someone around you is having a full on sneezing fit what about you Chris from Fremont uh, I usually do three uh -huh. after the third one they go four I'm like alright you're done like no more Yeah. and then if they keep going I'm like you're done yeah. you're done Right, you have to comment on when you're done, you know, blessing people. Right. Otherwise, they're like, why aren't yeah. you continuing to bless me? So you have to make it known. Hey, you you know, you've reached your limit. Thank you. Have a great day. Yeah, you have to. And then every following sneeze, they deserve to feel self-conscious is what I'm hearing. Correct. Yeah, I'm like, all right, you guys can stop it anytime now. I'm done. Spencer from Portsmouth, t talk to me about your God bless you etiquette. How are you giving out bless yous when people sneeze? Um, it really depends. Um, you know, like when I see a stranger, if they're in my line of sight, I agree with you. I definitely say bless you. Um, but I, I can do it both ways. When Sometimes when people sneeze, like they know there's a lot coming, like Logan had said, so I'll wait after like the second one. Um, but sometimes it's like bless you after each one, you know? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, I hear my boss sneezing a lot from her office and then you'll just hear me yell, bless you. <laughs> And I have a nose ring, so I sneeze a lot. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it, like, tickles my nose. Um, so I am, like, a three or four sneezer when I do. I feel like, just personally, if anyone's... If you're going to bless me more than once, then it's, like, an obligation for me to say thank you every time. Like, you can do it I once. It, it encompasses my whole sneezing fit. 
Well, that's why you got to oh, say, yeah. hey, no, you no need to do that. Mm. Like, it's on you. It's on the thank Sometimes you. Sometimes when I'm on, like, my third one, I'm like, all right, I'm I'm all done. Like, you're blessed. You know? <laughs> Consider yourself blessed. Everyone's getting blessed when they're around me. Cassie. Is it Cassie or Kathy? Kathy. What do you do? What's your sneeze etiquette? Oh, well, I totally feel Logan's five. But um, on a side note, congrats on being a new mom. Thank you so um, much. I appreciate I that. Do, I do definitely yell down the aisles and say bless you to people when they sneeze. There is a lady in the office that sneezes at least three or four times a day. After she sneezes once, she'll sneeze again, and I'll say bless you, and that's for the remainder of the day. Oh, okay. It's like a punch card. Like, you redeemed your bless you. You will not be getting any additional bless yous from me. That's hilarious. That's correct. That's funny. I think it's good to have a system, you know, especially if you surround yourself um, with multiple sneezers, you know? Like, you only have so many blessings to give. Yeah, well, in, in the event that I'm not there, at least I'm covered. Yeah. Shall you sneeze when I'm not present? This bless you will be yeah. redeemed. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Very good. I love it. Thank you for listening to us in the morning. Yeah, I love listening to you guys. You guys are fantastic. Well, thank you. you beautiful people. I I go into the office every day and say, good morning, you beautiful ladies, because nobody ever hears that enough. Oh, that's so nice. Feeling good? That took so much concentration out of me that I'm exerted, too exerted to tell these stories. You're a sleepy girl? I'm a sleepy girl. No, I got this. So, story number one. If you call the seacoast of New Hampshire home, you know all about Lickies and Chewies in Dover. It is the place that makes us all feel as excited as a kid in a candy store. They are a self-proclaimed medieval candy kingdom. Huh. It was really their king shakes that put them on the map. They are unbelievable. It's been really fun watching Lickies and Chewies gain popularity over the last 10 years, especially on social media. I have yet to see a more Instagrammable treat than their king shakes. They're just so pretty. So uh, a few days ago, Lickies and Chewies took to their social media to announce that they tapped into their Ill- inner Willy Wonka and they have majorly upgraded their chocolate production area It's bigger, it's better, and it's filled with endless possibilities. All we need now is the golden ticket. So now it's 2,500 square feet, and they're able to produce and create more chocolate. And they want to even host classes and chocolate making, like birthday parties and events. And it's really opening the door for them. Um, And we just love to see dreams come true here in our community because it started out so small and it's just getting bigger and better um, than ever before. So congratulations to the whole Lickies and Chewies Heck crew. Yeah. It's been um, it's been super fun to watch. And story number two, earlier this month, a teacher from the state of Missouri posted on the You Local New Hampshire Facebook group and was like, hey, I'm doing a class project. I teach geography here in Missouri and um, we're collecting postcards from all of the 50 states. Cool. The only state that we're missing from our collection is New Hampshire. I'm sure you can see where this is going. Lots of stamps. Uh, it's postcards. So oh, sorry. we here in the Granite State, Granite State like to represent the 603 in a big way and we totally made up for the lack of postcards. Miss Federson, the geography teacher, didn't receive one, not two, not three. She posted a pic on the Facebook page. It was like enough to fill up an entire bulletin board. Oh my God. Yeah. So we love that. We're proud of ourselves. We are so (laughs) proud for existing. And we're like, oh, you don't have a postcard? Let me get you 72. That should cover it. It's awesome. And what would you call all that, Logan? That's the good stuff. I would agree with you on 97.5 WOKQ. These. So before we get into the ye olde mind bender, I have a quick tale. What? Yes. Wow. What do you got for a tale that you've been holding out? You want to run it back and and give me less tune? We've been here for an hour. Why are you holding tales from me. Well, I, I wanted to w- make sure that more people were awake before I shared this tale. It's really not that good. Now I'm building it up. <laughs> so yesterday um, we were touring a daycare for Gwenny Girl. Fun. And I'm wearing my jacket, the one that we had the fashion show in. Of the, course. With the furry collar and the fur- furry sleeves. Oh boy. And one of the teachers was like, that's so weird. I saw a jacket just like that on social media. And she was like, wait a second. 
and she's like, are you uh, are you Kira? You know, from yeah, Kira. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yes, thank you for listening to the show. She's like, oh my God, I went to Pentucket. Oh. With Logan. Who was it? I didn't catch her name. How did you not catch her name? She didn't tell she really didn't tell me from her what, name. From what uh daycare? I'll uh, do a little stalking. Child's place in Hampton. New All right. Hampshire. I'll do a little Hampton st- Falls. I'll do a little stalking. But what I will she say She said is- she was uh, like a few grades above you. Me. Well, yeah, my so sister was Kyla. older. Yeah, my sister was older. I so. was like, what a small world. And I told her, everyone that calls into our show either is related to Logan, went to high school with Logan. This man is like, it's like. I grew up in the area. 10 what, degrees of separation. What do you want me to say? I grew up. I, I, you know what's crazy? I didn't even grow up in New Hampshire. <laughs> you did not. You I did know. Not. Okay, so are you ready for the EO Mindbender? I'm ready. Let's get her done. I have a pair, well, we have a pair of tickets to see Cameron Marlowe <laughs> at the Hampton Beach Casino Ballroom. Baby. So if you can answer this question correctly, one in five people think this food is overrated and disgusting. Logan and I don't feel this way. We disgust it. It's infuriating. Yeah, we don't agree. One in five people think this food is overrated and disgusting. 603-749-0975. That's where we're taking your guesses on the East Coast Lumber Building Supply listener line. Number one for New Country, 97.5 WOKQ. We're Kira and Logan in the morning. Talking is hard. Welcome to a Thursday. Fry A Jr., we call her around here. We are looking for your guesses for the ye olde mind bender. Let's go. Good morning, Ray from Drake. It. Good morning, and how are you today? Well, I am good. I feel like you are all business today, my brother. I'm ready to go. I think I got the answer. Woohoo! Wow, okay. One in five people think this food is overrated and disgusting. What is it, Ray? I'm going to go with mac and cheese. Mac and cheese, that would be so upsetting. Hang up on this guy. <laughs> I will not treat Ray that way. No, no, Ray, I'm just kidding. Mac and, che- mac and cheese is like an elite food. Yeah, but one in five people got to not like it. It's a good point. If they have a dairy intolerance, perhaps. Good one. Or a joy intolerance. <laughs> All right, Ray, we love hearing from you, especially to kick off the day with the first guest. You know we love that. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Hello, Ashley. You're on with Kieran Logan in the morning. Hi, Logan. Hi, that's us. Okay, one in five people think this food is overrated and disgusting. Okay, so personally, I would say sushi. Sushi. It's a good guess, actually. Because there's a lot of hype around it. Yeah, and a lot of people just don't like the idea of raw fish. Which I can respect. I don't agree with, but I respect. (laughs) A good guess out of you. Not the answer, unfortunately. All right, thank you. Nice to hear from you. You too. Okay, so still up for grabs. We have these tickets to see Cameron Marlowe at the Hampton Beach Casino Ballroom. If you can answer this question correctly, one in five people think this food is overrated and disgusting. This is crazy because this is an elite veggie. Mm-hmm. I'm talking top three veggie in my opinion. Throw a little bacon bits on there. Ooh! Get them a little crunchy on the outside. No, you didn't. Somebody, someone out there likes like feta on it. Gross, but that's okay. Feta. Is it not feta? I would I would do it. Some people do it with a little sprinkled cheese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not There's... for me. The bacon bits and a little uh, barbecue sauce on it. Mwah. Not for you with the cheese? No. No ches. No ches. Okay, 603-749-0975. You know it now. That was a good hint. 603-749-0975. You know it. I'll throw that around. Blast. It's time for Famous People Doing Stuff on 97.5 WOKQ. Famous People Doing Stuff is brought to you by Merchants Auto. 1,000 vehicles, 26 acres, merchantsauto.cars. So, uh, Morgan Wallen, we know that he's opening a bar in Nashville called This Bar in Tennessee Kitchen. He just filed permits. Obviously, he didn't file them. People did. Mm -hmm. For him, that he's going to be opening a bar in Vegas as well. Will all the chairs be nailed to the ground? buddy! I knew those jokes were coming. Mm. Yeah, I, I... I don't, obviously not, but such a bad time for him to be opening two different bars. It's not great. It's not great. He's throwing chairs. He's putting in new chairs. Maybe they'll just be booths. Okay. That would be a good choice. (laughs) Uh, L King is back with a new song. It's called Baby Daddy's Weekend, and you're going to love it. Baby Daddy's Weekend. Let's go. It's my baby daddy's weekend. Is 
<laughs> is we drunk yet? Is that what she said? I feel like that's what she said. That's going to be a summer bop if I've ever heard one. That was flirty and fun. I want more of that. Good news, bad news out of Boston sports last night. Uh, Celtics fell to the heat. They're one and one in the series. I'm not worried at all about the rest of the series for them. Guess they couldn't take the heat if you know what I'm saying. And moving right along from that horrific pun, the Bruins took care of business yesterday with the Toronto Maple Leafs 4-2. to two. They were down 2-1 to one at one point, but they just looked great in the third period. Did you catch the whole thing? The whole game. Oh, wow. I didn't miss a minute. Sorry, Celtics. I was busy watching the bees. That's what happens. Road. That's priorities. This is a crazy stat. Taylor Swift became the first artist in history to occupy 44 of the top 50 songs on Apple Music. Wow. Let that sink in. Okay? 44 songs. 44 of the top songs everywhere in the whole country. 44 of 50 came from Taylor Swift in her new album. It's pretty unbelievable. And the fact that every every day you have a different record that she broke. It's nuts. It's, I'm almost like desensitized. I'm like, which, what record did she bring yeah, out? No kidding. If I tease a new record, just assume it's Taylor Swift. Yes. Uh, so President Joe Biden had an absolute blooper of a moment straight out of the movie Anchorman. If you know the movie you'll understand what I'm saying. So he was re- he was at a rally mm-hmm. and he's reading off the teleprompter and he reads, you know, four more years. And then immediately after, what word does he read? Hmm. Pause. <laughs> he, now, <laughs> he was supposed to pause to let the crowd chant four more years. Right. And right. instead he goes, you know, we're looking forward to four more years. Pause. pause. Four more years. Pa-. And he's like, wait a minute. <laughs> Anything you put on the teleprompter, he will read. Exactly. I'm Ron Burgundy. <laughs> and and, and Kira's quoting the movie, by the way. Because they typed the question mark. Absolutely hilarious. Uh, David Beckham and Mar- Mark Wahlberg are facing off in a legal battle for over $10 million. David Beckham is suing Mark Wahlberg and F45 for $18 million, saying years ago he helped that brand get up and get off of its feet and Mm -hmm. get going, uh, and that he wasn't compensated for it. That's all I have for the information about it, but kind of ugly, especially because I like both of these guys a lot, Mark Wahlberg and David Beckham. I know, I like them both. So I'm sure I'll keep you updated with that, but that lawsuit's going down right now. That's all I got for the famous people doing stuff. Hey, thanks, Logan. So, uh, here in Logan's Cash Cow, it is winding down, but you still have a few more chances to win money from your besties. That grand prize of $30,000 is still up for grabs. So I'd be going for that. Your first chance of the day happens at 820 right here on 97.5 WOKQ. OKQ or Kira and Logan in the morning. What's going on, Lydia? Um, So I have a friend that has a little crush on someone at work and he basically has been like, like, I really like this girl, but the only thing stopping me is that I just started here and I'm kind of in a manager position. And so he doesn't know what to do about that because he likes her, but he doesn't want to mess up his job. So I think that's, he said, that's the only thing holding him back. But what is the opinion on dating a coworker? Like, how do you navigate that or is it okay? He's her manager? Yes. Like kind of, not in the same department, but like he is a manager. I don't think, I don't think he can do it. I will say this. My parents started dating because my mom was a manager at McDonald's and my dad wanted better hours. So he started dating my mom. They've been married for I don't, almost 30 years now. That being said, I'm not sure if this is my dead set opinion, but my knee jerk reaction is coworkers dating fair game. It's going to get messy, but it's fair game. Managers to employ, like employers to employees off limits. It depends on how much the job means to him, because I think that if it got to someone else, like yeah. it could be bad for him. That's a good point. Yeah. Is it a jo- like, is it a so job? I think that's what he's worried about. Job versus career is a big difference. So I actually think manager to employee at a job is okay. Manager to an employee at a career is wildly inappropriate. And like how much it means to the to this guy. Like if he would he be okay to lose his job over this potential relationship? Or I not? also think that the serve maybe I'm this is supposed to be an unspoken rule about service industry, but I feel like service industry is like a totally different beast than like a like a corporate job. I don't think that makes sense at all. Oh, okay. I think that servers try to put themselves or or, or like um <clears throat> The service industry tries to separate themselves from other industries mm. in a ton of different aspects, and it's very interesting to me. Because like the service industry versus a corporate, it's still a, either a job or a career, depending on what you're doing. Yeah. But there are just like unspoken 
like they carry themselves a little differently than you would a normal nine to five job. Yeah, because it's like late nights and it's a little different. You go out drinking with your coworkers after, like, like at like the local bar, like it just sets the table for some decisions to be made. Mm-hmm. So what's the deal? Is your friend dating her employer? Not yet. Would she? I think she would. Would he? That's the big question, Logan. I feel like he's figuring it out. Mm. Is, like, he, is this taking, his job I, or is this his career? I don't know. That's what I think it boils down to. All right, so is it okay to date a coworker? You listening? Have you ever done it? Did it work out or was it a big fat mess? Oh, I want a messy story so bad. <laughs> Why do you want a messy story? Because just give it to me. <laughs> give what the people want. Logan give me the, loves the drama. Yeah, give me a messy dating uh, an employer or employee story. Yeah, give us the piping hot tea. Is it okay to date a coworker? Would you do it? Have you done it? Did it get messy? Or was it beautiful? The wedding I just went to in California, those two were coworkers and they were keeping their relationship on the low down, down low for years. Wow, years. years. Plural with an S. Yes. That's something. Isn't that crazy? 603-749-0975. Number one for new country, 97.5 WOKQ. We're Kira and Logan in the morning. We are talking about, is it okay to date a coworker? Have you ever done it? Did it work out and end in beautiful matrimony? Or did it get messy? A big, fat, hot mess express. 603-749-0975. Hi, Catherine. Catherine, are you there? I am. That's awesome. So you're on Kira and Logan in the morning. How are you? Good. How are you guys? Good. So do you have a tale about dating a coworker? Have you done it? Um, I have, but I'm not going to tell the story today. I'm going to tell another story. If that's okay. Yeah. Yes. Gather around, Kios. What's the story? Okay. Well, you said you wanted something a little messy. Um, so I'm going to give it to you. Okay. So one of my friends, we were in a corporate job. It was for uh, a law firm. Okay. And. It was an intern, it was an intern, and one of the big top lawyers was interested in her, and they went out on a couple dates and ended up, you know, making it serious, but they wanted to keep it on the down low. So they kept it down for the down low for five years. Whoa. Wow, that's a long time. Yeah, so she wanted to make it, you know, she wanted more, um, and she was talking to us about potentially marriage and like, you know, trying to get him to get more out of the relationship. Right. And when she brought it up, he shot it down immediately. So they she thought, you know, maybe there's something more going on to the story. And it turns out that he had a wife who was also one of the top lawyers at a competing law firm. Holy, this is messy. That's really bad. I feel bad for his yeah. wife. I feel bad for the yeah. intern. It's just, man, what a juggling act. Did he get caught? I do think that she ended up telling his wife, but it didn't really come out. Damn. Yeah. Probably signed like an NDA. <laughs> that's, my, that's my messy story for the morning. Well, are you happy with that, Logan? You asked for the piping hot tea. I'm so uncomfortably happy. <laughs> Well, thank you for sharing. Awesome. We appreciate it. Yeah. And maybe someday you'll share your story with us. Oh, my story is boring. <laughs> oh, it just like ended in love? Yeah. Okay. It, just, oh. it ended. Boo. Oh, it just ended all together. We want infidelity. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the oh. call, my friend. Yep. Have a good morning. You Bye, too. Catherine. Bye. Okay. Is it okay to date a coworker? Have you done it? Did it work out or did it get messy? It doesn't have to be a messy story. I mean, Logan would prefer that, but I'm okay with a, you know, happy story too. yeah yeah yeah. it does uh, infidelity does not have to be included in the story i had a friend who was dating when i worked at the college before this kira yeah and she was dating they were dating in college however she graduated he had two years mm. so he was still in college and she was working at the college see that's it's it's it unfortunately sounds bad. It sounds really bad. They're engaged now, but for two years she was his boss, and she uh, yeah she was his boss, and he was still like a junior in college. Don't love that. Again, it worked out. No infidelity there. It's a happy love story. <laughs> we love happiness. Six zero three seven four nine zero nine seven five. Tell us about the time you dated a coworker. How did it go? Six zero three seven four nine zero nine seven five. Number one for New Country ninety seven five W O K Q. We're Kira and Logan in the morning. Welcome. If you're just joining us, we're talking about dating coworkers. Is it okay? Have you ever done it? Did it work out or was it a big old mess? 603-749-0975. Good morning, Lori. You're on with Kira and Logan in the morning. How's life? Uh, good now. Now that you're talking to us? 
Now that I'm talking to you, yes. I love that. Oh, that makes us feel nice, warm and fuzzy. So do you have a story about dating a coworker? I do. I mean, it's been five years now, but I um, moved from Massachusetts to New Hampshire, Mm -hmm. got a job at a local diner. Okay. Um, I was with my now ex. We were together for 18 years. Whoa. Four children. Yes. Started at the diner and met this woman. And over, uh, I don't know, I was there for seven years. But over the past, you know, the first few years I was working there, there was like a connection. But the thing was, is that her girlfriend also worked there with us. So there was three of us. Whoa, a throuple so, in the diner. <laughs> yes. Throuple in the diner, yes. So... <laughs> So, you know, the years went on and we, um, me and this, my now partner, um, realized that there was something there. Um, but I was in the middle of planning my wedding. Um, so what happened was uh, we decided that this is, the connection was just way too strong and we needed to do something about it. So she ended up um, leaving the relationship, moving out. I ended up giving back the ring, got planning her wedding. Ended the relationship, and five years later, we're together. So, wow. But it was messy, because we not only worked together before the breakup, we worked together after the breakup, all three of us. So, are you with the woman from the diner now? Do we lose you? I could not be left on a cliffhanger. Are you friggin' kidding me? Hello? No, oh, we lost her. Oh, my gosh. Here's what I got from the story. Yeah. Oh, I hope she calls back. We literally lost her. But yeah. here's what I got from the story. She was dating someone, I believe a man, for 18 years. Yeah, and they had years, kids together. And they had kids together. And then she started working at a diner, fell in love with this mystery woman who was already in a couple. Now it's a, a three-way woman throuple. And the, and the woman she fell in love with worked at the... Um, she had a girlfriend that worked at the diner. Yeah. Yeah. And now... So she called off her love with the man. And they were planning a wedding. This is so messy. And they canceled the wedding. <laughs> that- WOKQ or Kira and Logan in the morning. Okay, we are talking about dating your coworker. Have you done it? Did it work out? Or was it a big fat mess? 603-749-0975. We're going to Terry. I'm going to give you guys messy. Oh my God. <laughs> I so- love this. This is awesome. <laughs> Hold on, Logan. So um, I was recently divorced and started working in law enforcement on a military installation. Oh, boy. And I started to date my boss. Okay. And during the time we were dating, I ended up finding out he was married. Oh, no. So Hate I was that. like, you know what? I'm recently divorced. I just don't care. Okay. So, okay. Go ahead, girl. <laughs> it's his choice. So, it's his decision. Um, it is, it is. It didn't affect me any. Um, so we had a really big snowstorm back in 2008, I believe yep. it was. Ice eight storm. and nine. Yep. And um, I ended up getting stuck on the military installation base, all of my coworkers and my boss. And we all had to share rooms and come to find out his wife also worked with us oh no so not only did i have to work one of the gates with his wife i was sharing a hotel with him and she was also in the hotel area holy smokes did you guys get along well i mean you had lots in common um we did have a lot in common but um i would ask him to move me because i was really uncomfortable with it right Um, rightfully so you know look you know, just looking at her in the face, knowing what was going on, I did have some of a heart. So, r- then, r- riddle me this. Right? Did she ever find out? No. Did you keep this going while you were both in the hotel room? Yes. We oh, were my God. Together. You guys had, like, a rotating schedule. Yeah, we were together for about two and a half years. So, um, are you are and- you now broken up with this man? Is he divorced? Is he still with his wife? Yeah, what's nope. the story? He's- He's still with his wife, and we're actually still very good friends. How good of friends um, are you? Just friends. I live in a completely new state. Okay. Um, so I haven't seen him in 11 years. Oh, wow. Okay. 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 This is, yeah. Okay. This, this is, goes way back in the day, Buffet. This is wholesome, then. It's not yeah. wholesome, Logan. That's the wrong word. <laughs> <laughs> the end Definitely is wholesome. Not wholesome. Um, I unfortunately was in that frame of mind where I just didn't care. Right. Yeah. Um, I was really looking out for myself, and you know, I was like, "This is this is sweet. Look at all the meat." Ah! <laughs> 
Holy I mean, I smokes, I'm obsessed. I am obsessed with you. Thank you so much for being so vulnerable and sharing this story with us. No, you're very welcome. I actually didn't think I'd get through. I was like, let me see if I can get through. And um, if you can, just let me know the uh, name of that hotel when you get a chance offline. <laughs> I can't tell you that because it's on the military installation. Yeah, well, yeah. I, listen, I got a cat card, too. <laughs> you have made our morning show so saucy this morning, and we really appreciate that. You're welcome. You guys have a great day. Yeah, you, you too, too Love you. Bye. Bye. Love you guys. Love you, too. Okay, wow. I did not see that coming. Thank this, you. This took a turn. Thank you so much for telling that story, Terry. There, We had a lot. It was almost like a confessional this morning. <laughs> We I, had a lot of people coming forward. I wonder how many people use their actual names. We're gonna get, we're gonna get like messages. Hey, uh, are we still doing infidelity stories? Because I have six I'd like to share. Yes, I'd, I'd like to get this <laughs> off my chest. Please give me the number to call. Um, here's the number to call, not for an infidelity story, but to play Can't Beat Kira for Mara Morris tickets. Would you like to do that? Okay, let's go. 603-749-0975. Maren Morris tickets up for grabs. She's coming to the Hampton Beach Casino Ballroom. Baby. Baby. Thank you. 603 603- 749-0975. We play Can't Be Kira in less than 10, but we'd love it if you called right now. now. It's going down. Think you've got what it takes? Oh, yeah. Well, let's see. Ready, set, here we go. It's time to play Can't Be Kira on 97.5 WOKQ. Hello, Kim. You're on with Kira and Logan in the morning. Hi, good morning. Do you feel confident to take me on in a battle of pop culture wits? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Okay. Well, why not, right, Kim? <laughs> You're here. <laughs> right now. All right, kick yeah. me out of here. Let's go. All right, go ahead and uh, take a break right there. Take a break. Take a break. Go to the other studio. I deserve it. Just get out. Okay. Come on, make time. All right, Kim, she's leaving. She's going to studio number two. You ready to start? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Considered one of the greatest and most influential actors of the 20th century, this actor stars in The Godfather, Scarface, The Irishman, and Scent of a Woman. Who is it? Um, let's go with Al Pacino. Okay. Question number two. Frank Sinatra's Love and Marriage is a theme song for this 1980s slash 1990s sitcom starring the Bundy family. Um, Al, Al's Family? Al's Family, yeah. What's it called? Is it called Al's Family? Oh. <laughs> um. You got three seconds. Uh, Two. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> All right, Al's Family. We're leaving it at Al's Family. Question number three. This is a Marin Morris song. I can't tell you what the title of the song is because it's in the lyrics, okay? Hey. Got them Ray-Ban shades, pretty in pink. Called me old school, but hey, I'm a 90s baby in my blank. Can you sing it one more time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just give you the last line because that's what's really going to be helpful. I'm a 90s baby in my blank. Um, I'm about to wave Kira in. Any guess? Go ahead. Wave her in. She's waved. <laughs> She's waved. Kim, how do you feel about that round? Not so not so good. Were they difficult in your opinion? Um, I think it's just being on the Being radio. on the spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah being on the, the spot. got me, yeah. Kira, let's see how you do. Okay. Considered one of the greatest and most influential actors of the 20th century, this actor stars in The Godfather, Scarface, The Irishman, and Scent of a Woman. Al Pacino. Damn, girl. Mm. I didn't know if you were going to get that. Kim got that right also. Good one job. to one. Question number two. Uh-huh. Frank Sinatra's Love and Marriage is a theme song for this 1980s slash 1990s sitcom starring the Bundy family. All in the Family? All in the Family is a great guess. Not the answer. It's also not Al's family. Oh, it's married with children. It is married with children. Oh. Love oh. and marriage. <laughs> love and marriage. Go day. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Question number three. The score is still one to one. Kira, this is a Marin Morris song. I can't tell you what the title of the song is. Sure. Got them Ray-Ban shades, pretty in pink. Called me old school, but hey, I'm a 90s baby. Blank. In my 80s Mercedes. Yes. Good job. Kim could not come up with that one. Yeah, it's a, well, not that old, but an oldie but goodie. 2016. Kim, we're going to need the phrase of shame here. I'm Kim from Raymond. I cannot beat Kira. So you went out on a date and it felt really right. Should have locked that thing down. Nowhere in sight Was it what you said You were left on 
bread, it's not fair, it just ain't right. Yeah, you want a second date? Kira and Logan are here to help you, that's right. Hey, good morning, Frank. You guys have the the most unique old music of any radio station I've ever heard. It's like a guy and he's like, please wait. Some will be with your call momentarily. And then it's like spa music playing, like felt like I was someplace at a spa. It was the weirdest thing. Okay. All right. That's not really the vibe we're going for, so we're going to need to change that. Thanks for letting us know. Let's rock and roll. So do you want to tell us about your date with Marie and what's happening now? So I um, I met Marie. Um, believe it or not, it was through Facebook Marketplace, right? What? What? Uh, yeah, she was selling some tools on there um, that her dad, you know, no longer needed. And so I go by the garage, go by the house. And when I tell you she is just drop dead gorgeous, woof, she is amazing. Mm-hmm. She is. Okay. Um, and so, you know, I laid it on her, laid it on her and... Um, laid what you know, on her? <laughs> not that. Okay. Just a little, laid, little flirt ski? Yeah, a little flirt ski and, you know, um, you know, asked her out on a date um, and she said, yeah. Great. So, well, honestly, I said to her, you know, hey, you know, I'll give you more than what, what you're asking for for these tools if you let me take you on a date. Very and smooth. Said, yeah. You smooth yeah. criminal. Oh, it was so smooth. <laughs> and uh, and so, you know, we went out. We had a really nice date. You know, we had some steak and some wine. I really thought it was the absolute perfect date. Everything went great. Mm-hmm. Um, up until the point that uh after dinner you know i went in for a little peck on the lips and she like curved me so hard oh no <laughs> yeah it was kind of embarrassing like, she like she, dodged her kiss like she was in the matrix yeah i mean it was like in slow-mo too and then she like put her hand up and uh yeah that was the only awkward thing about the day um yeah but other than that, you know, we had a pretty great time. And, you know, even with that happening. So, but how come yeah. she, she curved your kiss? And like, well, what's up with that? You have any idea? I, the only thing I can think of is, you know, we had steak and some, you know, potatoes, mashed potatoes and like some broccoli. Maybe there was garlic involved in the situation. Could have been a breath issue. Okay. Mm. I just don't know what it was. She... But, you know, in her defense, she said she's not really a kissy girl on the first date. Hey. Okay. We all operate at different paces. Maybe it was a breath issue. Maybe it was a pace issue. We're going to find out for you, Frank. I would really appreciate that. That would be so great. All right, Frank, hang on for us. We're going to see if we can get Marie up on the other line and see what the deal is, why she curved your kiss, why she's ghosting you now. And we're hoping that um, when we offer her a second date with you that we'll pay for, that she'll accept that. I hope she will as well. All right. Sending you all the good vibes and all the good breath, Frank. Good luck. Okay. Thank you so much. Second date update on number one for New Country, 97.5 WOKQ. Number one for New Country, 97.5 WOKQ. We're Kira and Logan in the morning. And now back to second date update. We got her. We got the woman of the hour, Marie. She has agreed to come on the air for second date update. Hello, Marie. Hi. How's it going? Hey, I hear you've been dodging kisses from our boy, Frank. What gives? <laughs> all right. So here's the thing. Frank is great. Um, we, you know, I met him when he came over to pick up my dad's old tools. Um, he's super cute. But the issue is, he smells like beer all the time. Hmm. Oh. Like on his breath or just his whole yeah. being? A little bit of both, but like mostly on his breath. So, when, yeah, when did you first notice this? When he came over to my house to get the tools. But, you know, it was like a nice Saturday night, like early evening. So I thought he'd like just had a few. But okay. when he came to pick me up... He had non-alcoholic beer in the car. Oh. Weird, right? Like, Wait. I didn't really want to drive with him, but then he showed me the can, and I was like, all right, I guess it's fine. <laughs> okay, and that, I, I'm I'm going through a journey here, because at first I was like, this man has a problem. He's always smelling like beer. Right, maybe, same. That's exactly where my head went. Maybe a little yeah. bit of an alky, but then he's got non-alcoholic beer in the car, and he, that's, um, it's, it's weird. It's weird. It's taking turns I didn't foresee. <laughs> Me too, girl. Me too. Okay. So the smell of the beer and just weirded out by his smelling like beer constantly? Yeah. I just kind of hate it. Like, he ordered non-alcoholic beer at dinner. Um, So I think that's just kind of his thing. But 
I do kind of feel bad because, like, I liked everything else about the guy. Right. But the beer smell is just, like, it, it's too much. Was it better that it was non-alcoholic beer? Like, at least he wasn't all boozed up? Or is it just I mean, the smell was kinda, enough? But then also I feel like, you know, if you're drinking that, like, it's water. Like, that's just going to be the way you smell. Do you, uh-huh. do you think he's in, I don't know if you guys got to this on the date, but is he, like, recovering? I don't know. Okay. I don't know, and that's the other part where I'm like, I don't want to be insensitive, right. but I don't know. So speaking of being insensitive, Marie, uh, we're going to be a little insensitive now because we have Frank on the other line, so he did hear everything. Oh, that it's, it's okay. <laughs> you have no Sorry. reason to be ashamed. I think your, your reasoning was kind of sound, especially if he smells like beer all the time. Uh, but we're going to bring him in and, and try to delicately hash this out, okay? Okay. Frank the Thank Tank, you. you there? Hey, how's it going? Hey, it's good. So what's the deal? You smell like beer all the time? At least it's non-alcoholic. I mean, do you hear that? That's the ice in my cup right now. I'm actually having a non-alcoholic beer right now. I just like the taste. It's, you know, it's like drinking a Coke or a Sprite or a Pepsi or something for me. Um, never really thought about there being a problem outside. I mean, this it's non-alcoholic beer. This There's lingers no on your breath a little more than a Coke or a Pepsi or a casual soda. I never realized that, to be honest with you. Frank, Nobody ever. Are you drinking these all day? Like, are you popping? I mean, it's early in the morning now and you're having one. Are you having one all day and all night? Yeah, I usually crush a 12-pack easily a day. This, this is crazy. Yeah. This must get That's expensive, crazy, right? too. A lot. I don't know what to yeah. make of this. Is this even legal? Can you legally drink non-alcoholic beer and drive? Yeah. You can? I, I mean, it's isn't it just like soda? There's no alcohol. That's the I whole point. I don't know. I mean, I've been pulled over before, and you know, I remember the officer saying to me, Are, "Is that beer?" Um, I'm like, "It's non-alcoholic," and he just looked at me like, "You better be lucky. That's non-alcoholic beer, buddy." Oh so, yeah, it's totally legal. You're passing uh, a breathalyzer test if you were to be put to the test. <laughs> Let's get back on track here. So, Marie, um, you said your piece yeah. about um, the smell. He wasn't aware of the smell. Frank, I don't want to speak for you, but seems like maybe integrating some gum into the, your uh, non-alcoholic beer routine could be helpful. But I'm not sure that would be helpful enough for Marie. Maybe she's just weirded out by yeah, the sheer yeah. volume. I, I mean, it's a lot of non-alcoholic. I mean, that'd be, that would be a lot of any anyone drink, right? Like, that'd be a lot of soda. Like, I I'm going to agree with you. Not. But, like, I, I do take care of myself, and, like, I, I can't get on board with with that. Uh, I'm willing to, you know, not drink any non-alcoholic beer if it means, you know, to have a second chance with you. I didn't know. Um, you know, you're bringing something to my attention that I, I had no idea about. I, that's really nice of you, but I'm not going to ask you to change for me. Like, there's someone out there that is going to love, like, the whole non-alcoholic beer thing, and you crush a six like a 12-pack a, a day, a six-pack a day? I don't even know how many they come in. But like, someone else someone else will be popping them with you, I'm sure, in mm-hmm. no time. But I I can't do it. I'm sorry. It ain't her. All right, Frank, I know that wasn't the answer you were looking for, but at least now you know, my friend. Oh, my gosh. It's just really unfortunate. Sorry, man. All right, the time has come. Your first chance of the day to win up to $30,000 with Kira and Logan's cash cow. Boom, boom, by the clock. I'm sorry, I took your line. That's too bad. I'm sorry, you can say it. Get your rap out! Oh! Number one for the country, 97.5 WOKQ. We're Kira and Logan in the morning. We have the lovely Lydia from the tribe up in here. Our girl has some bold opinions about restaurant etiquette, so I'm going to present a certain restaurant behavior, and Lydia, you tell us if you think it's acceptable or not acceptable. Would you, Lydia, ask for a table near a power outlet to charge your phone? No. I'm just going to sit at dinner with my phone dead. Like, at least I won't be on my phone during dinner. I don't know. I feel like that's kind of weird. So Lydia says not acceptable. I agree, not acceptable. Kira? I'm not saying I'd never do it. I wouldn't... I would have to be in a circumstance like... Where you need to be on I your... I really would need my okay. phone. It's always, cir- it's always circumstance. But, like, but in I think general... you're okay with it. Are you not? I would probably be saying in a fun and flirty way, like, hey, if you have a table near an outlet, would love that. But if not, no worries. She's trying to make herself seem I know, better. She, I know. She does I it. also knew she was going to say that it's yeah. acceptable. Yeah. <laughs> Taking an extended period of time to decide what to order. So, like, everyone else at your table knows what they want and you don't. Um, I deal with this with my mother all the time because she gets so overwhelmed at restaurants that she takes forever to try and think of what she wants to say. 
Um, and then she just ends up like babbling some random stuff like about not ordering and it pisses everyone off. Um, so I just say, like, I'll go last. That's it. Yeah. Like, I, I don't try and be like, give me another couple of minutes, guys. Because like, obviously people are hungry. I'm not trying to hold everyone up. I'm a decisive person. So if I'm not ready and the waiter comes and asks, I will say, I'm not ready. We need a few minutes and speak for the table. But I will also do the opposite where if a waiter comes and it's been a while and somebody's still debating it and they don't make the call, I make the call for them and say, no, we're ready. Because if it's if it's been a certain Dictator. amount of time, if it's yeah. been a certain amount of time, you should be ready to order. I, I agree with that. I also think that like once someone says that they're ready to order, like you just have to make a decision. Like everyone's hungry. I'm not trying to make other people wait to eat. There's nothing like someone being like, oh my God, I was just so unprepared for this question. Like It's like you <laughs> sat down at a restaurant. Yeah. You knew you were going to have to order at some point. Right. Or even when they're like, what do you want for your side? It's like, oh my God. Oh, God. Another the, decision? What are the <laughs> options? It's like, look down on the menu. Correct. <laughs> I'm like, let's read a little bit, maybe. Do we learn that yet? <laughs> Allowing their children to roam freely. Yeah, no. I think you got to like, keep your kid at your table or like be with your kid. Like if your kid wants to like, if you're taking your kid to the bathroom, like, and you're going to let them walk towards the bathroom, that's fine. But like, especially with like a very young one who just will like be looking around and trying to like observe the world. Like, I feel like there should be a parent accompanying, accompanying them. I also do think it's weird when parents have kids on leashes, too. Because I've seen that in a couple of restaurants Yo, recently. What <laughs> is up with Kira? Are you going to be a, a leashed? This is a totally different topic. Oh, no. Would you be a leashed backpack, Mom? No way. You wouldn't? No. Well, you see that for me? I don't know. I don't know. That's why I asked. I don't, I, I don't know what I see. I have a crazy story about a kid roaming freely in a restaurant. I was at, well, I don't have to say the restaurant, a place in Hampton the other weekend. <laughs> and a mom, I don't know where she was, but we befriended her son. And um, he was probably like four years old and kind of roaming freely, but like we loved him. He like had a great personality and he wasn't bothering anyone, but he did slip and fall and the mom wasn't there. And it was like in a little puddle and his butt was all wet and stuff. Aww. And he was like starting to cry. So we comforted him and then the mom, the mom came back and we were like, hey, you know, your son, your son did fall. Like just if you're wondering why, he, why he's all wet. And she almost got mad at us. Like, how'd you let him fall? I was like, he's not my kid. I'm like, are you paying me to watch him right now? It no. It was great. That is nuts. I, that, I've never seen a kid wandering in a restaurant. It was like an outdoor, yeah. outdoor area with like, it had cornhole and stuff. Okay. Um, still, I feel like there should like, if your kid's especially pretty young and wandering, you should be accompanying them. Yeah. Or like have them within your sight line. Where was the mom? Like in the bathroom or like? I think she, she just wasn't in the paying. bathroom. Yeah. Yeah. I would not like, I don't like that. I didn't love it either. Thank you, Lydia. All right. So the famous people, they doing anything? They are. President Biden had an all-time blooper straight out of the movie Anchorman. He was pretty much identical to Ron Burgundy. I'll explain what happened in less than 10 on 97.5 WOK. It's time for Famous People Doing Stuff on 97.5 WOKQ. Famous People Doing Stuff is brought to you by Merchants Auto. 1,000 vehicles, 26 acres, merchantsauto.cars. So, uh, Morgan Wallen, we know that he's opening a bar in Nashville called This Bar in Tennessee Kitchen. He just filed permits. Obviously, he didn't file and people did mm -hmm. for him that he's going to be opening a bar in Vegas as well. Will the, all the chairs be nailed yeah, to the ground? buddy, I knew those jokes were coming. Mm. Yeah, I... I I don't obviously not but such a bad time for him to be opening two different bars it's not great yeah. it's not great he's throwing chairs he's putting in new chairs maybe they'll just be booths okay that would be a good choice <laughs> uh l king is back with a new song it's called baby daddy's weekend and you're gonna love it baby daddy's weekend let's go it's my baby daddy's Is we drunk yet? Is that what she said? I feel like that's what she said. That's going to be a summer bop if I've ever heard one. That was flirty and fun. I want more of that. Good news, bad news out of Boston sports last night. Uh, Celtics fell to the heat. They're one and one in the series. I'm not worried at all about the rest of the series for them. Guess they couldn't take the heat if you know what I'm saying. And moving right along from that horrific pun, the Bruins took care of business yesterday with the Toronto Maple Leafs four to two. They were down two to one at one point, but they just looked great in the third period. Did you catch the whole thing? The whole game. Oh, wow. I didn't miss a minute. Sorry, Celtics. I was busy watching the bees. That's what happens. Road. That, it's priorities. This is a crazy stat. Taylor Swift became the first artist in history to occupy 44 of the top 50 songs on Apple Music. Wow. Let that sink in. Okay? 44 songs. 44 of the top songs everywhere in the whole country. 
44 of 50 came from Taylor Swift in her new album. It's pretty unbelievable. And the fact that every, every day you have a different record that she broke. It's nuts. It's, I'm almost like desensitized. I'm like, which, what record did she break yeah, out? No kidding. If I tease a new record, just assume it's Taylor Swift. Yes. Uh, so President Joe Biden had an absolute blooper of a moment straight out of the movie Anchorman. If you know the movie you'll understand what I'm saying. So he was re- he was at a rally mm-hmm. and he's reading off the teleprompter and he reads, you know, four more years. And then immediately after, what word does he read? Hmm. Pause. <laughs> he, now, <laughs> he was supposed to pause to let the crowd chant four more years. Right. And right. instead he goes, you know, we're looking forward to four more years. Pause. pause. Four more years. Pause. And he's like, wait a minute. <laughs> Anything you put on the teleprompter, he will read. Exactly. I'm Ron Burgundy. <laughs> and and, and Kira's quoting the movie, by the way. Because they typed the question mark. Absolutely hilarious. Uh, David Beckham and Mar- Mark Wahlberg are facing off in a legal battle for over $10 million. David Beckham is suing Mark Wahlberg and F45 for $18 million, saying years ago he helped that brand get up and get off of its feet and Mm -hmm. get going, uh, and that he wasn't compensated for it. That's all I have for the information about it, but kind of ugly, especially because I like both of these guys a lot, Mark Wahlberg and David Beckham. I know, I like them both. So I'm sure I'll keep you updated with that, but that lawsuit's going down right now. That's all I got for the famous people doing You feeling good? That took so much concentration out of me that I'm exerted, too exerted to tell these stories. You're a sleepy girl? I'm a sleepy girl. No, I got this. So, story number one. If you call the seacoast of New Hampshire home, you know all about Lickies and Chewies in Dover. It is the place that makes us all feel as excited as a kid in a candy store. They are a self-proclaimed medieval candy kingdom. Huh. It was really their king shakes that put them on the map. They are unbelievable. It's been really fun watching Lickies and Chewies gain popularity over the last 10 years, especially on social media. I have yet to see a more Instagrammable treat than their king shakes. They're just so pretty. So uh, a few days ago, Lickies and Chewies took to their social media to announce that they tapped into their il- inner Willy Wonka and they have majorly upgraded their chocolate production area it's bigger, it's better, and it's filled with endless possibilities. All we need now is the golden ticket. So now it's 2,500 square feet, and they're able to produce and create more chocolate. And they want to even host classes and chocolate making, like birthday parties oh, cool. and events. And it's really opening the door for them. Um, and we just love to see dreams come true here in our community because it started out so small and it's just getting bigger and better um, than ever before. So congratulations to the whole Lickies and Chewies Heck crew. Yeah. It's been um, it's been super fun to watch. And story number two, earlier this month, a teacher from the state of Missouri posted on the You Local New Hampshire Facebook group and was like, hey, I'm doing a class project. I teach geography here in Missouri and um, we're collecting postcards from all of the 50 states. Cool. The only state that we're missing from our collection is New Hampshire. I'm sure you can see where this is going. Lots of stamps. Uh, it's postcards. So oh, sorry. we here in the Granite State, Granite State like to represent the 603 in a big way and we totally made up for the lack of postcards. Miss Federson, the geography teacher, didn't receive one. Not two, not three. She posted a pic on the Facebook page. It was like enough to fill up an entire bulletin board. Oh my God. Yeah. So we love that. We're proud of ourselves. We are so (laughs) proud for existing. And we're like, oh, you don't have a postcard? Let me get your 72. That should cover it. That's awesome. And what would you call that, Logan? That's the good stuff. I would agree with you on 97.5 WOKQ. All right, let's keep these vibes going, these good vibes, because we still have $30,000 to give away with Kira Logan's cash cow. Someone's got to win, and it might as well be you. So you know what to do. Get your rap out! Turn it up. We're interrupting your workday for another cash cow code. I was just thinking, I really hope no kids are bringing mother cluckers into school because that was going to be a bad look for me. Logan, you're a bad influence. I'll Six, be the one to say it. <laughs> 639. That's your cash cow code, mother cluckers. 639. If you want $30,000, you have to enter 639 in the 920 time slot on the app right now. Hey, good luck.
And <laughs> Number one for New Country. 97.5 WOKQ. We're Kira and Logan in the morning. Logan was playing the belly drums. Be, uh, uh, Biddy Boo's here. Not Biddy Boo. Um, Bubby. Oh, my Bubby. Our, uh, we have a cardinal right outside of our studio. We have like one tiny window that we can see through. Mm-hmm. And this beautiful red cardinal comes and hang out all the time. And Kira always goes, oh, that's my Bubby. Which means grandmother So in Yiddish. We, I, I mean, I can't take that away from her. I'd like to, but I can't. So that is Bubby from now on. But it absolutely is. And she used to love listening to me on the radio. So I like to think that she's coming to visit us me and too. listening to our show. Me too. And cackling along. Thank you, Bubby, for being here. Absolutely. So compliments, take backs, and apologies. Brought to you by Merchant Sato and Hooks at New Hampshire. Um, I want to compliment Andy, who sent us a bit of a love note on Instagram. Yes, good one. Mm-hmm. Happy you're doing this. I'm really sorry. I also apologize for my phlegm. So it's an apology and a compliment. Um, Andy wrote, I used to hate listening to the radio in the morning, but when I found you guys, it completely changed my opinion. I now look forward to listening to you guys in the morning. Thank you for helping me wake up. That's so nice. So nice. Um, It really, I love that people, people are so busy and it means so much to take the time and send us a compliment like that. You don't realize how much it makes our day because... Our show would be just two idiots talking in a room if it weren't for you. And it's like really nice to know that we're making a difference. So love you, Andy. Thanks for listening. And uh, you could send us love notes on Instagram too if you want. You can follow us at 97.5 WOKQ. That's our handle. Yeah, I've had a a lot of friends over the past like year say that, granted, they are my friends. So they're listening because they like me as a friend and us as friends. But I've had a lot of people say, You know, I used to only listen to podcasts in the morning, but honestly, I don't mind the commercials because you and Kira are so funny. That means a lot. That kind of stuff makes doing this so much better and so worth it. And makes that 4 a.m. alarm a little easier. Yeah. 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 So, you know what? While we're on this subject, go tell a friend about Kira and Logan in the morning. If you wouldn't mind. Because we think we're pretty damn funny. (laughs) And uh, we need need some more ears to get our humor out. Yes, we would love that. (laughs) Yeah, if you don't mind telling, it doesn't even have to be a friend. It could be just like, you know, the Dunkin' Donuts drive through person, your neighbor, whatever. We really would appreciate it. Spread the word if you like us. Speaking of being funny, Terry, Terry, Terry. Terry, you Ooh. dirty, dirty girl, oh, you. Stop. You were so funny. Today we were talking. It turned into like an infidelity. Uh, Confession. Confessional. But really, the call-in topic was, have you ever dated a coworker, And how did that work out for you? And Terry called. And I wish I could play her whole three-minute conversation because she was so funny. But this was the highlight for me, for sure. Okay, just so you know, she dated a coworker. Um, he was actually her boss, and she found out he was married, and then she didn't care. Um, and then this is how she like felt about that. Um, I unfortunately was in that frame of mind where I just didn't care. Right. Um, yeah. I was really looking out for myself, and you know, I was like, "This is this is sweet. Look at all the meat." <laughs> No way. I was appalled that she said that. But honestly, she was honest. She was vulnerable to tell her story, perhaps making up an identity, perhaps not. Terry, thank you so much for the giggles this morning. You made my morning so funny. And on that note, we're out of here. Ginny Rogers is up next, and so is 30 Minutes of New Country on 97.5 WOKQ. And all day long, don't you forget it. Who loves you?